I think that's pretty perfect. Pretty much a bowl full here. So um, that's how you make raw milk butter. guys welcome back to the firm life outfitters channel today uh, you're in my kitchen my messy kitchen and I didn't want you to think that I always have a clean house or a clean kitchen so I'm just inviting y'all in mess and all dishes in the sink crumbs everywhere uh, because this is real life and anyone who tries to pretend that everything is spotless all the time is telling you something so I'm here just to welcome you into my kitchen the way if you would show up one day you would find our kitchen and I hope you will feel welcome even if it's not super clean so today we are going to make butter now butter is like one of my favorite things to make and I never thought I would say that um, but now that we have a milk cow it makes perfect sense to make our own butter and um, so obviously our milk is raw and it is not um, homogenized meaning it is going to separate and I'm not sure you can hopefully you can see this I think you can so right here is the cream line this and above um, is cream and this has been sitting in the fridge for um, about three days and so it's good and separated um, this below here is a skimmer milk, so it doesn't have all the fat that this up here does. And this is where the butter comes from. So when I got these out of the refrigerator where we keep all of our milk, um, I tried to be very careful to move it very slowly and not to slosh it around because I don't want it mixing together. I want to get as much of that solid cream as I possibly can for our butter. Now, if you don't have a milk cow, which most of you watching this probably don't, and um, or if uh, you don't have access to raw milk to make your butter with then I would suggest either going to the store and getting some um, some cream yourself try to find a good source of cream um, if you can if possible uh, you can do some research online to find out what some good brands are that you might can find at um, Harris Teeter or Ingalls or one of those stores but if at all possible I would either visit a local dairy um, where they do either real low pasteurization or um, or a farmer like us who um, don't process their milk at all and sell it um, sell it raw so uh, anyways so this is what I got out this morning I've gotten one two three four five um, jars uh, quart, uh, sorry half gallon jars of milk that either we had customers that didn't pick up this week uh, we have a herd share um, or we just had a little bit extra that's usually when I make butter or when I run out which we have no butter right now so it's really it's really needed um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a spoon that Adam is actually a, a really wide serving spoon that Adam actually bent for me um, he we were trying to use just regular serving spoons that were just straight we were trying to use um, measuring cups little ladles things like that and we have found this to be the best tool to use to get our um, our cream off with so he bent this for me and it works really good just to dip down and get the cream and I'm going to do it very carefully so that I don't disturb the cream um, as much as possible and I'm going to just put it in my KitchenAid mixing bowl and that's how we're going to make the cream.
Now I've gotten this pretty good. You'll see the cream line is now very close to right here. Um, and because we're going to use this milk that's left over to either make yogurt or cheese or just drink it, I like to leave a little bit of cream in it. We want some of that fat in there. We don't want to just be consuming skim milk. That's not going to benefit us um, and our kids very much. So, uh, so I've gotten most of the cream off of that. You can see this is about how much you will get or I got from this one um, this one half gallon jar. So I've got four more to do and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. All right, so I am done with the five half gallons that I separated by hand. You can buy a milk, uh, a cream separator if you're going to do this uh, with your own milk. Uh, we have not gotten to that point yet, but that is on my, my wish list that one day we'll have a um, cream separator that will kind of do this job for me, save me some time. I'll actually link one in the um, description below if you want to check out how they work. But um, so I've got, I don't know, I'm not sure how much cream I have, but my, my bowl is just about a third full, I would say, of cream. So that's a good amount of cream I got here. Now we're gonna take it over to the KitchenAid and I'm gonna put it here with my stand mixer here. And um, I have the whisk attachment on here. I have heard that the batter um, attachment is better for doing this but mine is actually messed up and so i don't have one right now um so i'm just going to use the whisk attachment which is fine that'll work um fine it just whips it a little more and makes it rise so you have to kind of keep an eye on it to make sure that it actually doesn't overextend the bowl so While that's going, I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing. Um, this will run for a while, probably at least 10, 12 minutes. And um, if it starts sloshing too much, you might want to put a towel over it so that it doesn't slosh all out on your counters or whatever. Towards the end of the process, which I'll show you, um, what it starts to look like, it starts to get very yellow, especially if you're using grass-fed milk um, cream, then it's going to be really, really deep rich yellow color and um and that's kind of how i determine if it's really good butter or not um but it's going to start getting more solidified into that rich yellow color and it's going to start separating from the milk the, the skim um that might have gotten in there with it so um it's going to start kind of sloshing that around you're going to want to make sure you turn the um turn the speed down so that it doesn't just completely slosh out of your bowl and um yeah then i'll show you what's next Okay, you see that we are not done yet. Obviously, it is not butter yet, but I wanted to make a note to you that you see all this that's gotten up on the sides. Um, I'll always stop it at this point and then scrape the sides so that we get all this goodness down in it too so it can, um, it can process.
so we're getting there and I decided to scrape the sides one more time just to make sure we get every bit of the butter that we're supposed to get out of this so we're almost done beautiful is that now one of the most exciting things to me about making butter is actually the buttermilk so that is what is going to be left over in the bowl when we get done what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a um, a wooden spoon and I'm going to get all this off of the whisk and get it together and formed into a ball I'm going to use my hands um, so I can get every bit of the butter together um, and then I'm going to squeeze out all the remaining liquid into the bowl um, if you can get as much liquid as possible out of it then the butter will keep longer just FYI and then what's left over is going to be our buttermilk also um, when I get done squeezing the liquid out of the butter I will um, wash it off in really really cold water um, and that just cleans off the rest of that extra milk that's left on there all right Is where the batter attachment would come in handy because when once you push all this out it really does kind of separate again so we're just doing the best we can with what we got we got a lot of butter today i'm excited about that I think I about got it. I'm gonna wash this off in the sink. All right, so now I'm going to take some Himalayan pink salt and make salted butter with it. Um, I get this from Azure Standard, uh, which is a great source if you're looking for somewhere to um, to source some really good quality food and. Um, uh, ingredients, spices, things for cooking, uh, produce, anything like that, then I highly suggest Azure Standard. Um, you can probably find a drop near you where they will ship it out to you and then you go and pick it up uh, with a bunch of other people in your community. And I'll actually leave a link in the description to check out Azure Standard. But I'm going to use Himalayan pink salt. This is unrefined salt. This is, um, this is a very pure, natural um salt different from table salt that you might get at the store so i'm just going to sprinkle some some salt on here i guess i usually start with about i'm actually using my hands here uh, actually i start with about a a teaspoon and then i will mix it throughout the butter and see if um, it tastes good to me and if it needs more then i'll add more if it doesn't then i'll um leave it there so i'll just mix it up real good throughout it actually looks really pretty when you when you leave the salt on the outside um, but i want the salt throughout so that we don't have to mix it each time that we use it you can also make any sort of flavored salt if you'd like to or leave it unsalted uh, we use salted butter the most that's why i'm doing salted now um, but we have done like a honey cinnamon butter before which is delicious if i had a lot of extra butter i would probably make a sweet one as well um, but i don't and we go through a lot of butter in this house <laughs> so i'm just gonna keep it with what we use the most Now because this is salted, you 
can technically leave it out. I don't just because this is a lot of time and effort put into this, uh, starting with Adam milking the cow and all that stuff. And then me having to take the time to process it with four children. So, um, so I'm going to put it in the refrigerator so that, cause that would be a big loss for us if this went bad on the counter. All right. So now the taste test. I think that's pretty perfect. So I put about a teaspoon in here and, um, I'm honestly not sure how much butter I got, but it's a pretty much a bowl full here. So, um, that's how you make raw milk butter. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope you have learned a lot that you have confidence to make your own butter at home, whether you have raw milk to use or whether you buy cream at the store to use. It's just a really cool process. So, um, and I did not realize how easy it was until I started doing it regularly. And now we very rarely buy butter at the store. And, um, so I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you'll subscribe to our channel and see more of our videos coming up. Actually, the next video you'll see probably is a buttermilk biscuit recipe. And I have had many requests for buttermilk biscuit recipes. So I'm going to do that one next and use the buttermilk that we just got that I want to show you. <laughs> the buttermilk that we just got from, from processing this butter. It's so yummy. It's going to make the best buttermilk biscuits. And that might actually, well, I really love butter, but that might actually be um, a pretty, pretty close second to the butter is having the buttermilk to use for baking and whatnot from now on. So, all right. I will talk to you guys later. Have a good day.